All right, so next we want to we're gonna do a we're gonna do a, a camshaft install. So, um, but before we do that, I like my Loctite uh, medium strength blue. It's kind of a paste. I like it. It doesn't run like the normal Loctite does. You see a little bit. Um, but what we're going to do is install the uh, timing chain tensioner. So that slips right in there. In fact, we should probably take the chain off first before we do that. Um, and then we can essentially tighten these bolts. One, one down, here's the other. Line that up. Um, I'm not a big fan of uh, using air tools, uh, especially doing final assembly. Uh, you know, engines like this, uh, I like to take my time. Um, I generally never record videos, so apologize if it's not really, uh, the narrative doesn't really flow like, like it should, but um, I also um, do take note of torquing uh, certain fasteners um, properly like timing covers, um, torque to yield bolts like crank bolts, um, things like that, head, you know, head bolts. Those, uh, I, I always use a torque wrench, uh, inch pounds or foot pounds, depending on how much, what we're talking about. Um, but things like timing chain tensioner, um, I've, I've done this enough where I have a pretty good um, feel on exactly how much torque it should be, um, especially on a, a part like this that's uh, not critical um, with blue medium strength Loctite. So um, before I install the cam, I did want to show you what I was talking about um, with the difference in the timing covers with the variable valve time delete. Um, if you look, this is the stock timing cover. So it is uh, simply a cast aluminum timing cover, which has a uh, variable valve timing actuator, which uh, has a pin that moves in and out, essentially that engages and dis disengages the uh, variable valve timing um, uh, actuator, which is in this uh, piece here that we talked about. Um, so uh, all of this essentially has been... Uh, redesigned via CAD, um, which is very nice, by the way. Um, LME late model engines really did a good job on this. K-Tech uh, also does uh, a very similar uh, setup. Uh, but I like the LME setup because they actually um, alter, machine the LS3 sprocket to put the timing hole, the, the, the camshaft uh, timing hole in the proper position. The K-Tech LS3 sprocket, it's off by six degrees, I believe. So you have to, you have to know to rotate it. I think uh, so many sprockets over or teeth over, um, which to me is, you know, for the money you're spending, essentially this kit um, is uh, 500 bucks, which is a lot of money. Um, when you consider uh, the kit to just disassemble the stock piece is like less than 50 bucks. So, um, but uh, again, we're talking about uh, a high-end motor here, so a little different situation. Um, why you want to go with lighter pieces? Um, this is a one-piece billet aluminum LME setup, and if you notice, it doesn't have that center actuator in the middle anymore. They've eliminated that. Um, they still make use of the factory uh, sensors, the uh, camshaft sensors, uh, all this other stuff. So I'll take that out now. Um, I just wanted to show you uh, just essentially how nice that piece is. Um, so 
and uh, show you the difference between the, the stock one and the LME modified version. So now uh, we are going to install the camshaft. Um, so we can align the sprocket there. And this may uh, be a little ugly. Um, well, I'm just kind of winging it here. But this is a uh, Vengeance Racing Stage 3 camshaft, um, which has, uh, I don't, I can't say the exact specs, but it's it's well over six, uh, 656 or 7 lift. Um, so it's it's a very, very large cam, camshaft. Uh, it would need a high stall converter if it's an auto for sure. Um, but fortunately, I'm an M7. It's a, I'm a manual transmission, so uh, it'll work very well right out of the gate, and especially work well on blower uh, motors and big cube motors like this. So, so what I'm going to do is uh, take the camshaft out, and common sense here tells you that um, you should have clean hands, of course, um, before you do this. Um, and here's how you know which way to install camshaft, of course. Um, there should be a little um, pin sticking out of the front side of the camshaft. And that aligns with the camshaft sprocket. So that allows you to ensure that your timing and everything is set up properly. So <clears throat> before we proceed, um, I'm going to get probably really messy here so let me move that nice billet cover out of the way um, so like the old trick um, when you get the cam towards the end you, you really want to use the cam bolt to kind of give you some leverage to pull and hold on so I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolt in there ahead of time so I have that and now what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and start adding some comp cams, cam and lifter installation lube. Um, it's essentially just assembly lube. Uh, this helps on startup of the engine until the oil pressure gets built up and everything can, uh, can be lubed correctly. Now, one thing to note, <clears throat> this camshaft has a 32% increase on the fuel load. So again, as I said, it's not larger, it's, the base circle is smaller which allows more travel um, to increase the pump distance, um, which increases the pressure. Um, so this will give me a nice healthy bump in fuel pressure on the stock DI system, so before my secondary fuel system has to kick in. So what I'm going to do is start just getting my hands dirty here. You can't be afraid to get dirty if you're doing this kind of work. So. Be generous with it. Uh, so, essentially, you want to lube up all the journals, pretty much everything. Now, what's uh, important here, a lot of people will uh, lube the entire camshaft, and that's not necessary because you know, <laughs> then you're going to get it all over you, and, uh, you know, it's just, it doesn't make any sense to do it that way, so it makes more sense to uh, essentially start with part of it lubricated, and just essentially slowly, very carefully, you don't want to nick the bearing surfaces because they are fragile but you want to insert the cam slowly and then when you reach the end where you've essentially ran out of lube um, on those surfaces you just add more pretty simple huh and that makes it where you don't get it all over you which I kind of am anyway but again, this is uh, it's important have everything uh, covered properly. 
you don't want any premature wear on startup. So now I can just keep going. Right on in there. Sometimes you gotta kinda twist and rotate and feed it in there. I don't like a little bit more right there. All right. There you go. And then as I go in, I'm just making sure that I have plenty of uh, assembly lube on all the surfaces. You know, I may go overboard here, but that's just how I am. Especially on the, a nice motor like this. So just keep uh, feeding the can through. And you'll notice here, <clears throat> this, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but this this journal or, or this uh, face here on this uh, bearing uh, or where the, where the fits inside the bearing has a slot or a groove in it. And that is where the oil will flow through that slot, through holes that are pre-drilled in the cam. And that actually uh, is what lubricates uh, the cam through the bearings. There's actually a groove in here. And uh, it uh, allows the oil to flow through all the orifices in the motor, through all these little sort of oil passages. Um, but uh, this is the one part in the cam where it has the actual slot where the oil can flow right through. So, and I'm gonna keep going. Being very careful. Now I'll go a little bit more. And now you see why the bolt at the end is important because I'm running out of uh, area to grab onto the uh, camshaft. So, Yeah. All right. Yep, I'd say that's plenty of lube. <laughs> uh, yeah, I might have went a little, little bit overboard, but that's okay. We know that uh, on startup, this thing is going to be good to go. So let's get that last bit right there. Come on, baby right in there and then you might need to go to the other side and coerce it into the the last bearing uh, there's there's on the back side of the motor there's another uh, uh, essentially there'll be another plate retainer plate that prevents it from from going uh, on the back side where the uh, <clears throat> um, flywheel and and uh, clutch assembly and all that uh, is installed but now you can see our clutch is uh, um, made a little mess, but that's okay. That's normal. Um, now we can take the cam bolt out. Now that our cam is in there properly. Okay. Uh, I want to clean up really quick. Uh, just wipe my hands. Uh, I'm gonna get this. Uh, assembly loop stuff off my fingers real quick. Um, clean up a little bit right there. Just because I'm a little OCD. Alright. So now, uh, it's very nice. Um, <clears throat> now, we can take the cam retainer plate, which that actually holds the cam in place. That prevents the cam from wobbling out. Um, let me make sure that I got that in the right direction. It goes just like that. And I have four screws. Um, I'm gonna use my uh, blue Loctite again for the cam retainer screws. All right. And by the way, we're almost done here. Almost done. So after we do the cam retainer plate, the cam will be uh, completely installed. Um, then what we'll do is uh, I'm going to 
take my uh, little impact wrench, tighten these down real quick. Again, do a uh, crisscross pattern. Okay, and let me get that up there. And there we go. Clean up the excess. Again, they don't need um, crazy torque on there. We are, you know, we're screwing this into aluminum, so uh, you want to be careful with that. But <clears throat> now, uh, cams installed. So next, um, and I am going to sort of finish uh, the torquing process separately, off camera, um, or either in another film, another uh, edit. But I am going to show you how to uh, install the cam sprocket and align. There's essentially a dot here. And what you want to do is you want to align those dots. So, and that's where it gets a little tricky because that dot is over here. So I need to, I'm gonna have to turn the cam a little bit, so. And that's what I mean. There's a, there's a little bit of, uh, finessing this um, and I need to make sure the cam doesn't go out the back because I haven't finished that back side yet. So, okay. So what I want to do is turn this to where you see this little notch here. It's not technically a dot, but that notch should align with the dot here on the um, um, the crankshaft sprocket bolt. So, and this is where you really have to be um, dead on. So I don't know if you can see, but the number one piston is at top dead center. Um, so if I can rotate the block, uh, you can see here this number one cylinder. So one, three, five, seven. Um, two, four, six, eight. Number one needs to be at top dead center, which means the piston is all the way at the very top. Um, so now you can see that we have a dot here, and then we have the dot there, all nice and aligned. So the trick is going to be getting this sprocket, uh, you know, getting all this on, of course. I gotta take this back off. So there's a little bit of little bit of coercing and you gotta get the sprockets lined up. So the teeth lined up. So that's the catch. You gotta get that all lined up perfectly. And I don't know if I'm far off. Pretty close here. Um, I might be off by a tooth here. So anyway, this is the kind of stuff that you do off camera. I mean, it, it's just you got to get the right tooth aligned, you know, right centered. So it's a little tricky, and if you don't get those two dots. If you don't get them exactly on the right tooth there, then you, your timing is off, and that's bad. So, um, we don't want that. Definitely don't want that. So, I think, uh, I mean, it's close. Very, very close. So what I may do is uh, stop the video just because 
this part, I may need a little second set of hands here. Um, yeah. So, but anyway, point is, I wanted to, to, to just really make a note that for this to work, you got to have it exactly on the right teeth with um, those slots lined up um, six o'clock, I mean six o'clock, 12 o'clock. So, and then also the camshaft notch has to be exactly in the right place. So, um, I am going to stop there, take a break, and uh, just make sure that I take my time with this and get that right. But you get the idea.